It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion. This is for Tuesday, the 7th of May. I'm Michael Groff. Temperatures pretty close to seasonal averages today. Tomorrow, even Thursday, some breezy conditions at times. But as we head toward the weekend, we'll see that gradual increase in afternoon highs, and we're going to get pretty close to the century mark by Sunday, Monday, and much of next week. Now, I will say there is just a little bit of forecast uncertainty that we'll encounter along the way as well, which could make things at least slightly interesting around here. It's something to talk about here in the middle of the dry season. Will it result in any precipitation for us? Yeah, probably not. But we'll get into it anyway here, as we always do. So let's dive in and discuss first the almanac from yesterday. Not bad. 86 degrees the afternoon high, 61 the morning low, and many of us were down in the 50s yesterday morning and this morning as well. 91 and 67 are the averages. That record high, yeah, 106 degrees from the year that we don't like to talk about. Looking outside right now, just after 10 o'clock, sunny sky, 77 degrees at Sky Harbor. Dew point 23, yes, it is bone dry. Relative humidity, 13%. Wind light, barometer, steady. Upper level weather pattern across the nation, that vigorous area of low pressure, that short wave that brought the severe weather yesterday across the central plain states, continues to lift northward. And so the focus of showers and storms today will be centered further to the east. And now we've got that area of low pressure over the Dakotas. But for us, yeah, dry westerly to northwesterly flow is going to be in place and temperatures near normal and some breezy conditions at times. The watch warning map, we do have red flag warnings aplenty here across the southwest. Those are indicative of high fire danger, and that usually happens when you have very low humidity, the breezy conditions that we're anticipating at times, and warm temperatures, although not especially warm, but uh, still, wildfire conditions are in place, especially with all the uh, precipitation we had earlier in the spring. Uh, so things are really blooming out there, and so... Yeah, it's kind of a tinderbox now. We've got some wind further to the north and west of us, as well as uh, well up north across parts of Montana and Wyoming. Some winter weather conditions, even a blizzard warning on the map there. Uh, yeah, sometimes, even in the month of May in Montana, you get some pretty fun weather up there. Snow and blowing snow and all of that. You never know. Convective outlook for today, we do have the enhanced risk of severe storms, level three out of five, and that's for parts of Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, so Indianapolis, Cincinnati, kind of in that zone, of course, Columbus, Ohio, anywhere up there yeah, in the Midwest could see some uh, strong and severe storms today, all modes of severe weather possible, particularly in that enhanced risk zone, strong damaging straight line winds, large hail. And, yeah, a couple of tornadoes, a possibility, maybe even a significant tornado, one of those violent long-track tornadoes. We saw plenty of tornado reports yesterday, stretching from Oklahoma all the way up into parts of South Dakota and Iowa. Lots of wind and hail damage reports, too. All right, here's the precipitation outlook closer to home. This is valid through Tuesday morning of next week, and you can forget it. Nothing in the valley, nothing statewide. A little bit of a caveat to this, however. And we're going to detail that as we get to the models, see what the future may hold. Here we go. This is the GFS. It is the 12Z run, and this is valid at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Low pressure moving up across the northern plain states, and the focus of showers and storms, obviously, to, well to the south and east of that. Now, a piece of this low is going to eventually start to break off and what we call retrograde or kind of move the wrong directions, big fancy word for going the wrong way, uh, as it sags back to the southwest across the Rockies and into Utah, maybe even eventually northern Arizona by uh, Thursday. We'll talk about that here as we look down at the surface for today. Things look rather quiet for us. Sunny sky. High temperatures, upper 80s, low 90s. Normal high for today is in the low 90s, 91, 92 degrees. We'll be right around there. 89 to 93 is our forecast. And a light afternoon breeze. Tonight, clear sky, lows mid 50s in the cool spots, mid 60s in the urban core. Tomorrow, it's more of the same, upper 80s, low 90s, light afternoon breezes. But you'll notice, low pressure is sitting off to the north and east of us, and it's kind of going the wrong way. It's going to sag back to the south and west. Wednesday night could get kind of breezy here. Thursday, we might see some breezes at times, too. Sunny sky, highs 87 to 91. We'll shave a degree or two off of our afternoon highs. 
Could be a few showers and thunderstorms just to the north of us across Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, maybe even right along the Arizona-Utah border. And I'll tell you what, the GFS is making things a little bit interesting here. On Friday, it's got this low, maybe sagging all the way south into far northern Arizona. And if that does happen to occur, that's a big if, but if it does, uh, we could see some widely scattered showers and thunderstorms. Northern Arizona, especially up around the Grand Canyon, over toward Page, up into Utah. If you're heading up there toward uh, Kanab and Penguich, maybe a, maybe a shower or storm up there. And, and of course, over into parts of Colorado, New Mexico, the Four Corners region, the higher terrain. For us, we're still too far south, but uh, this is one of those scenarios that, you know, sure, if we saw this low continuing to sag southward, even though the air mass down here is bone dry, could still see some cloud buildups on the rim, but I, I just don't think it's going to get much closer to us than that. Nevertheless, we're going to watch model trends. I would still say for Friday, just uh, breezy conditions at times in the afternoon uh, and high temperatures, probably still around 90, maybe the low 90s. Now, as we go to Saturday, this moves off to the east. Showers, thunderstorms possible across New Mexico, Colorado, West Texas, some of the adjacent states, maybe far northeast Arizona. For us, though, temperatures are going to start to warm up as ridging tries to build in. Highs back toward the mid-90s. Upper 90s maybe closing in on 100 degrees on Sunday. A sunny sky. And again, the typical afternoon breezes that we see here in the month of May. Sometimes I don't mention that on a lot of these videos, especially as we get toward May and June. But there are those, it's kind of this uh, typical afternoon breeze pattern that we get here. The west-southwest winds. They're usually 5 to 12, 13, maybe even as much as 15 miles an hour in the afternoon, especially in May and June. Uh, we do see that a lot here. It's kind of a typical thing. East winds in the morning, west-southwest winds in the afternoon. Um, they're usually not particularly gusty, but I guess on Saturday or Sunday, we could see a, a stray gust of wind or two to watch out for. Uh, nothing significant, though. Monday... Here's something kind of interesting, too. The GFS is trying to bring another upper low down the West Coast across Central and Southern California. Not a particularly intense low, but enough to maybe throw a little wrench into the forecast. It actually, the GFS is actually showing some isolated showers and storms over the rim country of northern Arizona on Monday. And I just don't know if there's enough moisture around for that and if this low is going to evict any moisture in for that. The, the Really, the... The moisture profiles here across the state just look way too dry, but a high-based shower or storm, I guess, would not be out of the question, and we don't want to see that because that could result uh, in a in the wildfire potential, but I guess it's something that we'll keep in mind, but this is way out there toward the beginning of next week, and obviously things are subject to change. Here's a week from today. This is Tuesday the 14th, and again, that low, central Southern California Isolated shower or storm possible in the higher terrain, yeah, but around here, no. Uh, not in that kind of a setup, I'm afraid. High temperatures would unfortunately still be pretty mild, or pretty warm. Uh, despite that low, I would say highs uh, somewhere in the upper 90s to about 100. Um, we'll see how that evolves, but uh, unfortunately... Uh, this time of the year, we'd really have to get a significant low to knock down temperatures. Going on 10 days. Oh, boy. This is Thursday the 16th. Look at that to the south. That, my friends, is a 594 ridge that's building across Mexico. And we don't want to see that behemoth anywhere near us anytime soon. Uh, we do see the upper heights poking up with that ridge, though, now approaching 585 decameters for us. And so afternoon highs would more or less be right around 100 degrees, if that's right, with the only relief in the form of low pressure way too far to the north to have any impact on us, maybe a low way off to the west, and we see a very strong ridge building out there across the northeast Pacific and up into eastern Russia, and we don't want to see that either because... The net result of that would be to force these short waves down into the Rockies and cut into the Plain States. And what that would do is serve to bump this ridge up, force it up along the West Coast. And so we'd be under a dry northwesterly flow and the heights would probably accelerate up 
quite a bit way out here toward the end of next week or the following weekend. And if that's a pattern that we start to see developing through much of the summer, that does not bode well for the monsoon. Now, of course, we are looking at a snapshot at a moment in time off of one deterministic model 10 days out. So I don't want to get anybody too worked up as to a possibility, but I'm just telling you this is this is one of those things that as weather guys, as meteorologists, we like to look out for uh, out here. Uh, we like to watch these model trends to see what kind of patterns begin to develop. And when, when, when I see 594 ridge to the south, when I see a huge ridge building in the northeast Pacific and up in eastern Russia or the Bering Sea or into Alaska, I do not like to see that. That is not something I, I want to see uh, going into the late spring and summertime around here. All right. So, uh, let's look at rainfall for Phoenix. This goes out through the 21st of May. This is off the GFS Ensemble. Interestingly, there are a handful of members that try to show some rain over the next few weeks. But look, the Ensemble mean is still down there uh, well under five hundredths of an inch. And I'm not going to concern myself with that. The European Ensemble basically shows nothing. And here's the air quality forecast for the rest of the week and heading toward the weekend. Really don't have to be too concerned. Uh, ozone in the moderate range, the particulate matter, the fine particulate matter looks to be mostly in the healthy, the low range, the good range, as they, they used to call it. Um, low to low and moderate for your PM10, uh, the particulate matter. So uh, once you start to see numbers up around 100, that's when we start to get up into the unhealthy range or the high range here. So uh, luckily, we don't see that, but uh, as temperatures heat up and if the air kind of starts to get real stagnant here, we will start to see an increase in that ozone, unfortunately. Okay, temperatures off the national blend of models, an overall trend up, and by next week, it's got highs right around the century mark, lows mostly in the 70s, and that is the sign that the long, hot summer is getting underway. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> That's going to do it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. My next video is back here tomorrow morning. Should you happen to enjoy these videos, then be sure to subscribe, like, share, click that notification bell. Leave those comments, questions, and suggestions. And if you really like what we do here, then click that thanks icon below the video and make your monetary donations. $2, $5, $500,000. Dollars. It all helps in the furtherance of this channel. Or you can donate directly via PayPal. Groff show at gmail.com. That's G R O F F show at gmail.com for PayPal. The executive producer of the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion is my O A O. That's one and only the sweetest of all time. The Asian sensation and proprietor of sweet child, org and the Facebook page of the same name, sweet child, Arizona. There it is. I'm talking about my Michelle. <laughs> I'm I'm glad that this hotkey worked. I tried this uh, when I was setting up the video this morning. Hotkey didn't work. I sit here and I'm like, well, I guess it's just not going to work. And then I go to do the video and it actually does work. It's the opposite of how things normally go where, you know, it's like Wiley e. Coyote. He, he sets up the perfect trap for the Roadrunner. He practices it, tests it out, works fine. Then when it comes time to catch that coyote, doesn't work and that's how it that's how it always works with these videos too you set up something you hope it's going to work just fine then it doesn't this this did the opposite this this is a good sign this is a good omen today is going to be a good day we're all about positivity here and you know that's what sweet child arizona is all about too so how about that so i do encourage you to check that out the facebook page sweetchildaz.com michelle works very hard on that and uh, does a great job and of course we have that and all of other uh, all the other stuff Michelle is involved in down in the description and stuff that we both do, including the streaming station that we put together. It's called KMGX. We play a ton of music, have a lot of fun with that. That is linked up in the description. Also, uh, I would play you a sample of what we do over there. But if I do that, if I if I play KMGX right now, the problem is, um, well, you know what happens. We would get demonetized. Because unless I play music that's my own or copyright free, um, then YouTube comes along and demonetizes it because, well, 
I don't know. It's, I won't get into that. But anyway, it's, uh, it's just one of those frustrating things about being a content creator here on YouTube. All right, folks. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching all of your continued support. I know. I, I do have a separate channel where I can do rants, and I just haven't done rants in a while. That is definitely one of those rants. So that's, that's one thing to go off about. But we're going to end on a positive note. I do thank you guys so much for watching. This channel is it's all because of you that we continue to exist and we continue to do these videos and we continue to grow very, very slowly, but very, very surely. And I do appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe and stay cool. Stay hydrated out there too. have yourselves a beautiful rest of your Tuesday.